five units. So, like I said, we've got a hospital, a wildlife unit, an adoption centre, inspectorate. We've also got the farmyard and the horse care unit. So we have a wonderful lady here called Lindsay Willis. She's the manager of the farm, yard and horse care unit. So she comes with a lot of experience with handling big animals, horses. She was in fact a stallion master in the army at one point. So you don't mess with her. And um, yeah, we've got this beautiful farm yard. This is just the back side of it. I'll take you to the prettier part just now. Um, but we're very lucky. Over the years, we've had various people donate trust to us so that we can build stables. Um, you know, and the more stables we have, just like the kennels for the dogs, if we have better facilities, we can care for more animals. So I'm just going to take you in here. And there's a very cheeky boy called Chief. And um, he was brought in with a bunch of ponies. Actually all in really beautiful condition, but I don't think the owner necessarily can potentially take care of them anymore. So Lindsay's trying to work out a plan um, of how to go forward with these animals. So Chief's been with us for a couple of months. He's beautiful, he's very bitey. He's, Hello Chief. He likes to nibble, but he's a gorgeous little pony. Um, and this is another thing, you know, we're not just here to help animals that are treated cruelly. We're also here to help people who maybe need advice about how to properly care for their animals. So, you know, a lot of people, they might not always do the right thing, but it's not because they're being cruel or unkind. They just don't know any better. Um, and for us, it's important that people know they can come to us for advice. You know, we're not there to necessarily just take people's animals away. We would love to be able to, you know, make sure that people know we're here as a support system. We'll help you if you're going through a rough time, if you're financially stressed out, you know, come to us and we'll do our best to, you know, help you out. Um, so it's not always just a case of animals coming here that are in terrible condition. Sometimes it's just people who can't afford a private vet. Um, so Lindsay makes a plan for a lot of these people she knows in communities who love their horses and their ponies, but sometimes they're just going through hard times. Um, no, you're not going to bite me. And then over here, <laughs> there's a little pony that he's been in here for a few days. I only met him yesterday, but you can see this is an example of a pony who's just been neglected really, really badly. Um, he's still quite nervous, but you can see, just so, so emaciated. And this is a, a breed of a Shetland this pony? Is, I think, yeah, this is a Shetland pony. So yeah, I mean, it's just comparing that pony to this yep. pony. You, you can see his ribs it's, and, it's and then they are on, on yeah. the feet, you know. That's you just wonder the pain that poor animals You see there's a lot in, in the world nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, this is, you know, this is what we do. Do you guys have here also a lot of problems with uh, heart and lung worms? I think it's an issue, definitely, especially in areas where people don't see vets. They might breed ponies in their backyard and then they don't actually realize, oh, I need to get a vaccination. Yep. I need to deworm an animal. They don't know. So that's what Lindsay does. She does a lot of outreach with guys that do love their animals. Mm. I mean, I mean, these ponies, and you'll see some of Chief's friends in the other farmyard, they look magnificent, yeah. but maybe there's certain things he hasn't been doing fully. Um, so it's our job to help where we can. And, you know, we do Oops. offer services and cheaper deworming and vaccinations for people that can't afford private vets. Um, because at the end of the day, if we don't help and, you know, just offer support, then the animals suffer. Um, that's, hey? that's a problem, eh? Gorgeous, he's such a beautiful pony. It's a shame I cannot take it to the Netherlands. I know. Otherwise, I, t I took it, you know. He's beautiful. I love horses. He's calmed down a lot though because he's been gelded, so he's getting there. Morning. Hello, I'm from Pet Farewells. I just removing dead carcasses from the road and from SPCA dead bodies. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the information. Good job you do. <laughs> so yeah, this is a bit of a sad scene. Sadly, yesterday there was a pony um, that broke her leg. So we've got them coming to collect her. Um, so this is, you know, the, the sad side, but the wonderful thing is the people knew to call us and they knew that we were here to help yeah. relieve her suffering. So And that's really also reality, you know. It is the reality. Yeah. It's very um, sad, but yeah, that's... But that's thank God she didn't, wasn't left to just suffer alone in a field. No. Um, and then recently, I'll take you inside, but we had a wonderful organization donate some money to us. 
um, and Lindsay has been begging for a really nice upgrade which gives her the opportunity to help more horses and you know Lindsay's an incredible woman and she will be here you know sleepless nights she'll be turning a horse over every two hours it needs to turn if it's been injured but also that's just you know that makes life very difficult and we wanted to give her a facility where she would have a proper winch system where when horses come in or even cows and large animals you can actually winch them up yeah. like you would in a proper kind of um, equine vet yeah. so very excitingly we've revamped her office and it's been set up so we now have a proper we now have a proper horse care theater and if the lights are on no they're not on yet but it's now a proper set up they're going to put in proper flooring so that it's soft so where there is an injured horse or bovine, equine, they will be in a safe, secure environment. Um, and then this, this sort of, I don't know what to call it, this beam will then have a winch attached to it. Okay. So the horse can then be moved out of this treatment room and then into the other room next to it, which will be the recovery room. So it's very exciting to have something this high of course, tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just means we can offer better treatment to horses in need. It's also important to have, yeah. uh, have, have this kind of rooms, you know? So this is all because we have people who fund us and donations and all of the hard work the fundraising team does means that now we can put this in place. So yeah, bit by bit we get there. Yep. And then... Over here, just one of our little farmyard animals. Is she still in here? Oh yes, here's mommy with her baby. Oh. Yes. So she had these about two, three weeks ago, I okay. think. Yeah. So they're all just hanging out here. <laughs> they're so cute. What do you have those? Pretty little pigs. But here also for this kind of animals, you, you must neuter them, otherwise uh, you, you will have uh, yep. you will have too much. Absolutely. Hello. 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 So here, volunteers doing their thing. Morning. Hello. Good morning. 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 Good morning. Hello. Our mobile unit um, fleet. So these are our mobile unit guys who go out with their mobile clinic and they go into disadvantaged communities every day and then they offer basic veterinary treatment. And if people need them to bring dogs back here to our hospital for something more serious or maybe sterilization, then our mobile clinics will facilitate that. So, yeah, that's another kind of department that we offer. I think people just assume we have inspectors and we have dogs for adoptions, but there's so many facets to what we do here. And another example of our um, supporters, um, we just bought this Bucky at the end of last year, Bucky truck, um, and it's for our education officer who is manning a compassion in farming program. So he goes out every day and he makes sure that Local farmers are just taught how to properly care for their pigs and their sheep, you know, in rural environments. So WTG, which is a German um, fund, funded the purchase of this bucky, which is amazing. It's a great so thing, yeah. We're yes, very indeed, grateful. Yes. Yeah. And this is our farmyard. So this is where we'll have anything from ducks and donkeys and pigs and cows. Um, they all come here. And yeah, Lindsay's been incredible in making sure that 80% of the animals that come here have been adopted, which is phenomenal. So she'll make sure they go to happy farms where they can live out their days. Um, and yeah, this is the best place to come when you work here and you want to just take a break from the day. Of and course. Hang out with the creatures. It's relaxing to see how they enjoy it here. Yeah, eh? I love that, it. That, that's amazing. I think a couple of the goats here are going to be here forever. They're yeah. Just Lindsay's in love with them and yeah. they'll, they'll look dead. But they're all ridiculous and lovely. And you guys fall also in love with those animals. You Definitely, see? That, that's yeah. a problem. No, it is a problem. And it's funny, like everyone who works here, you know, you, you get used to it because you work here and yeah. you have to, in some ways, put your feelings aside. Yeah, because but that's very hard. You don't you know? want to cry every day. No, 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 no. But sometimes you can't actually stop it. It's like falling in love. Sometimes yeah. one animal just gets into your heart. Yeah. And it's the way it is. So yes, so Chief, that very beautiful grey pony, 
these are all from the same owner. So you can see, I mean, he he's definitely been caring for them. Yep. Um, but I think there's been an issue potentially with money and yep. looking forward. So Lindsay's and then the best thing is to do, uh, yeah, call you guys and, and discuss about the situation. Eh? Yes. And that's Belinda. And okay. she heads up our events, <laughs> our events team. But as you can see, she's getting down and dirty yeah, yeah, with yeah. the volunteers. So we've got a lot of volunteers in the background helping clean the paddocks. Because yeah. actually Lindsay is not here at the moment. Lindsay's okay. on a well-deserved leave, which okay. she never takes. <laughs> um, but yeah, here are all these beautiful ponies. They don't like me very much. They're quite grumpy, these ones, but they're beautiful. Hey, Bubs. Hmm. And I think two of them are pregnant. So they're well fed it over here, right? Yeah. No, they're beautiful. Of course. Hey, pretty. And we also work with a lot of international volunteer groups that send out students and they come here and they'll okay. work here for a month or so. So also brilliant. from overseas? Yes, okay. yes. A lot of um, Dutch students, American students okay. um, and German students. That's the, what I've noticed is the majority of volunteers that come. Okay. It's a great thing also for you to ha have an extra pair of hands. Big you know? time, because yeah. especially just with our local volunteers who work here, um, the reality is they Without them, we struggle because oh. our, you know, we we have to watch money. We have to watch oh. how many staff we have, and people work really hard doing the job of two, three people, which oh. is, you know, the, the world we live in now for most industries. But you know, for our adoption center in particular, you've got, let's say, 300 animals in the oh. adoption center with the dogs, and every day they need to be fed, they need to be clean, they need to have the kennels washed. Those people have to do that every day. They might not have time to walk a dog, so the volunteers that come every day are so important because they're the ones actually taking the dogs for walks, socializing with them. And the people that work here do socialize with the dogs and they love them, but they have to get to the next kennel and clean and feed and this and that. So the volunteers are, are like our lifeblood in terms yeah. of keeping the animals happy. Um, so yeah, we're very, very lucky. And then it's also wonderful kind of end of the year spring you know we're lucky when we get some donkeys in and horses in there'll be foaling seasons so where we've got a beautiful little foal over there with the mom so we can go over there and get some footage we actually had about eight ten donkeys here a month or so ago and there were three donkey babies oh. it was wonderful <laughs> how sweet is that eh? they were gorgeous oh yeah yeah they're such sweet animals and then we get other things like rabbits and hamsters and roosters. So anything goes. And that's some Kiwi, so he kind of manages everything Hello. here and helps Lindsay. Good morning. I'm very fine. Thank you that you're doing such a great job over here. Thank you. No, no, he's always working. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello. That's Samson. Okay. Hello, Samson. He's become much braver. He used to be so nervous. <laughs> Hello. Now he's got a little herd. He's got some friends. <laughs> now he's and he's the little bay. Okay. She came here, oh gosh, I want to say like six months ago or so, and her mother unfortunately didn't make it. Oh. So she bonded with Kelly, so they're best friends. Um, you know, and sometimes you just get strange accidents. Like, unfortunately, there are a lot of horses that roam around in communities and they're... Yeah, but, uh, but if you look them now, you get, uh, you get attached towards them, you know? Definitely, you, yeah. You fall in love with those uh, animals. And yeah. It's a shame people treat animals. Uh, yeah, it's very sad. I mean, I think for a lot of people, they're just working animals. Yeah. Um, but the sad thing is because some of these people don't necessarily have paddocks and stables, oh. the horses wander into the road. Oh. So we've had several horses that come in from car accidents, which is just awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we it's had one recently that had a massive wound oh. over her chest. Um, but yeah, I mean, Lindsay took such good care of her yeah. and she recovered and she was adopted. So yeah, thank God they end up here That's rather than left somewhere yeah, yeah, suffering. Yeah. Actually, go over here if you want. Okay. Hi, Mama. So we've got Axel, Rose, 
and then Octavia. So both of these are Rose's babies. Hey Axel! How old is the mommy? Mommy, oh, I actually don't know exactly how old she is. I think she could be around eight. Okay. Um, so she's not old. Well, she's still very young, eh? But she's got a very, very bad knee. Okay. So unfortunately for her, she'll never be the same. Um, so we're hoping at some stage we can adopt her out with her baby. Yep. Just somewhere where they can yep. hang out and be companion animals. Is he was a working horse as well? I don't know her story fully. Okay. I'm not sure how she got here. I'd have to check. Um, but yeah, she had she had Octavia here. Yeah. Um, so she's still weaning Octavia, and then at some point we'll separate them. Yeah. So Octavia can grow up. But yeah, this is a little family here, which is quite sweet. It's very beautiful indeed. And then around here, there's Willow. Willow and Layla. So Willow was. Um, but she's got such good condition now. She's very skinny when she came here. Looks like a Frisian horse. Yeah, there could be. There could be some in there. Yeah. So yes, we want to just push these and try yep. and find them homes. Random roosters and rabbits. Okay. So yeah, so long as it's got a heartbeat, we'll look after yep, it. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Because we're right here. What happened, Tara? Um, she pulled out her stitches on her own. She went home. It's fine. Okay, so we need full surgery. Prepped for surgery, most likely sterilization. So in this theater, it's generally emergency operations, things like car accidents, dog bites. Um, you know, recently it was New Year's, so you have fireworks accidents where animals are burned. Um, generally, every day there's always sterilizations, which is really important to offer people um, basic veterinary care. Um, and then things like orthopedic surgeries, we generally refer to specialists. Um, but yeah, our vets are just as accomplished as any other vets. They all go to the same school. So yeah, they work really hard and it's non-stop and it's basically like working I'd imagine in a war zone because <laughs> it never stops. Um, and it's a great experience for new vets. Yes. Yes. We've got a Dutch team taking some pictures of our facility. We're just snooping around. Hello. This Hello. is Dr. Debbie. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Hello, Doctor. I always get a chat on me with the people. She sings. It's 
<laughs> well, the great job, great job what you guys do here. Eh? Okay. I appreciate it uh, very much. Uh. Thank you. We're very busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, oh, all great job. Dogs and cats, and then suddenly they'll have a seal or a lizard or something else to oh. work on. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. of the SPCA. So what's taking place here, I supply all the medication. If animals are sick and meds needs to be prescribed, the nurses will then come in here and I'll do the prescriptions. Thank you very much. Basically, not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank nice you, to sir. meet you all. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Uh, and this is our little laboratory. So very simple, but if they need to do blood smears and whatnot and test for any infections, they do it here. And then we've got um, different clinic rooms. So if we suspect an animal's got a very contagious disease like distemper or parvo, yeah. which can all be vaccinated against, um, then we put those into a separate clinic just to make sure we don't have risk of it spreading. Um, and then I'm going to take you to our high care unit, which is basically our emergency ward. So it's for animals that need immediate care. Um, they need to be monitored 24 7 it could be animals that have been injured in a dog fight it could be car accidents so they're the vip guests being given the best care um, and it's a mixture of anything from stray animals to cruelty cases and then owned animals coming in for treatment um, so yeah you'll have cats and dogs all just being looked after here um, yeah and it's it's hard sometimes you'll see some horrible things but they've got people that love them and look after them which is great um, just recovering it. They're on their drips and getting their medication. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Talon, what are you doing? They're doing a video for um, the a project. So. Oh, okay, yeah, so what I'm doing is just going to have to replace the dog's strip and we're going to hang it up so that the fluid can just run properly again into the dog and then yeah so that's about it that i'm doing thank you for your uh, explanation Welcome. very grateful Those, yeah. uh, those breeds but they're are. actually very like gentle, family-oriented yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're big. Yes, yes, they're, they're very big, and they eat also a lot. Yeah, very expensive <laughs> dogs yeah. to care for. And this is our little um, the cat ward. Obviously, 
obviously it's a bit stressful for some cats to be around dogs. So, morning! Hello! So these are where a lot of the cats that are receiving treatment in the hospital hang out before and after surgery. No. Always something to 24 do. hours each day, eh? And you, you guys uh, work. Yeah. work really hard. It's yeah. just non stop. It's amazing yeah. what, what we do for the job. Mm -hmm. Hello. 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 Okay, now I will take you to. Morning. Morning. Good, how are you? Morning. I will take you to the inspectorate. And then we'll go to the wildlife unit. Maybe if we're lucky, there's something interesting in wildlife. And this is also part of our hospital. It's the outside ward. So we just keep animals here to make sure that they don't pick up any diseases that might be in the hospital. Because obviously, being a welfare hospital, people coming in off the street, some yep. dogs aren't vaccinated. You've got to be mindful that they could catch something. So dogs that are kind of kept separate, we know that they're recovering and they won't catch anything. It's a bit of an old building, but it does the job. <laughs> and then these are exercise runs. So the volunteers come here and play with the dogs. It's really lovely. Obviously, our parking area for all our inspectors okay. who are always in and out all over the show. And every day they've got to come here, clean their vehicles, make sure that their vehicles are washed down, disinfected, because obviously, when they're bringing new animals in, you don't want to transfer diseases. So, hygiene is very important here. Okay, now this is our inspectorate. Okay. So, this is the building where we have our, um, our call center and we have our um, control room. So this is where we'll receive calls every day um, for animals in distress, people needing advice, people needing help, stray animals being spotted, animals being knocked over, um, anything and everything. The calls get directed here. We've got con two um, control officers who will then decide which inspectors go where. Um, and we've got a tracking system where we have this TV which shows where all our inspectors are and then they can decide, okay, we can see that Connor is five minutes away from the next call, okay. send Connor. So yeah, they work really hard. We, um, our inspectors, we have about, I want to say about 15 inspectors at the moment, um, and they have to cover an area of 14,000 square meters. Um, sorry, 14,000 square kilometers. So it's a huge area. Um, and yeah, they work non-stop. They're on call 24-7. This is our wildlife rescue car. And when, so, you, and when you take animals from uh, from their owners, uh, is there always police uh, officers? Not uh, always. No, it depends okay. if it's a crime scene, if police have been called. Um, our inspectors are able to um, decide if they can confiscate an animal. Sometimes it's dependent on whether they've already warned um, an owner in the past and they've come back for a checkup. And if okay. the people haven't heeded the warning or changed the situation. So for instance, maybe we've gotten a call that an animal hasn't been um, given water from a neighbor. So our inspectors will go, they'll say, listen, this is unacceptable. You need to give an animal fresh water every day. We'll come back in a week and check. If they come back in a week and things haven't improved, our inspectors can then say, listen, we're confiscating the animal. And that's it. That's yeah. what our inspectors are, are there to do. They, um, we're the only organization that actually has the backing of, um, uh, how do I say it? We're the only organization that can actually act in kind of a, a law enforcement way. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, our inspectors can act and enforce the law. No other welfares can do that. So we can take an animal away if we think the animal's in danger or suffering. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is take you inside and we can check out the inspectorate. 
Um, there are lots of desks that will have no one sitting at them because those are the inspectors. <laughs> so they come in at the end of the day, they file their cases, they get evidence, they put dockets together for court cases um, where they're laying charges of animal cruelty. Um, but right now it'll be quite empty. These are our control uh, offices. That's Mag and that's Russian. So yeah, it's a hard job because you've got to deal with some people that are unreasonable, you've got to deal with angry people calling where maybe there's been a report claimed, uh, filed against them and they don't believe it. You know, many people think because they own an animal, they know what's right for it and no one can tell me, you, know? you can't tell me how to care for my animal, but if you are not caring for your animal and the animal suffering, we can definitely enforce some laws. Um, so yeah, they have to be very patient um, and yeah, it's non-stop, the phone just rings off the hook all the time. This is Wobble. She's one of them. Hello, Wobbles. She's quite difficult. Hello. Hello, Hello girl. Hello. She does scratch. Watch out. Hello. So you were going to be a bird of God. So she just hangs out. We've got a few other cats that live here. Um, and then this is our inspectorate where they come in and, oh, we've got one inspector here. Amazing. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Why don't you tell me what you do? Just a general overview. I am inspector at the horse care and farmyard unit, which means majority of my cases are relating to horse care and farm animals, which means I go out to inspections, also proactive inspections, which means I go to stable yards, um, abattoirs, sale yards, all of those things. So mine are not just domesticated animals, although I do help there, but majority of my work is related to equestrian and farm animals. Thank you very much Preventing for your to them. Yeah, yes. thank you. Radio.